Hi, everyone. Welcome to August edition of the Reading Research Recap. Real quick, before we get to my highlights from the SSSR conference in Copenhagen, I want to cover two new papers that might be helpful if you're an early grades um, teacher, because these two new papers cover new sight word lists. Why should we even be thinking about an updated sight word list? Well, the existing ones are really old and they might not reflect words that children are seeing and hearing today. This first paper created a new list based on children's books because children's books are sort of the main vehicle used to transition from oral language to print-based literacy. They found some high correlations between the Dolch list and their new list, but there were some interesting shifts in the words that are most frequent. The second study used New York Times best-selling books to come up with the new list, and there was a lot of overlap between older lists such as adult, but there were some key differences, especially with regards to authors of color. So in line with the earlier study, this paper suggests that teachers need to be using updated sight word lists. Okay, la osko vila te kopehan. That means in Danish, I think I probably ruined it, but let's move on to Copenhagen. So let's go through some of the highlights from this conference. I'm here at SSSR. It's the first day of the conference and you can see so many great talks going on behind me. SSSR stands for the Society for the Scientific Study of Reading and they put on this conference as well as this journal. And when we talk about the science of reading, the research behind it, it's really journals like this with high impact factors where that body of knowledge is coming from. This conference features some of the biggest researchers, thought leaders, and change makers in the world of literacy, both past and present. The conference was packed with incredible new research, but I've picked just a few things to highlight here that will be of interest to this audience. Dr. Devin Kearns gave a really interesting talk using a computational modeling approach to show that the computer learned words better when fed a diet of more authentic trade books, level books, rather than just decodables. Now, this is very preliminary evidence, but it does kind of suggest that both types of texts are necessary, which echoes findings from a recent meta-analysis they also did. I just got out of a really cool talk about a new program for inference making for kindergartners. Take home message being that you don't need to wait until the older grades to start working on comprehension. You can use their screener and their program to start as early as kindergarten. There's also a really great talk by Suzanne Adloff about a new universal language screener that um, can be group administered. Dr. Holly Lane talked about the different patterns she saw across schools and districts when implementing the UFLY program. No surprise here, strong school and district leadership definitely matters. One of my favorite talks in the entire conference and one of the most um, alarming talks was by Dr. Tim Odegaard, which showed that universal screeners don't work well at predicting third grade, end of grade um, state test scores of students if they're in an underprivileged or under-resourced school. It's not the fault of the screener per se, but rather has to do with how we report and interpret false alarm rates. Copenhagen featured incredible architecture, beautiful art, inspiring design, good food, and amazing shopping. But there are two specific things related to English and reading that I think this audience, and especially teachers of reading, will appreciate. So the first thing I want to show you guys is in this beautiful town of Roskilde, which is about 30 minutes outside of Copenhagen by train. Roskilo was once a bustling Viking stronghold, and it's from these waters behind me using ships like these that they launched several repeated invasions that forever changed the English language. These repeated Viking invasions that occurred over centuries brought over words that we still use today, so words for the days of the week, as well as more common ones such as of, all, and egg. The second thing I want to share is back in Copenhagen. This incredible view is taken from inside the Black Diamond, which is also the Royal Library of Denmark. It's called the Black Diamond because it looks like this from the outside, but there's a 900 year old book inside of it called the Copenhagen Psalter that I want to talk about. The Copenhagen Psalter is a book of Psalms, and this one's really special because it's over 900 years old and they're really expensive and hard to make, but they think that this one was made for the King of Denmark, who was a young boy when he ascended the throne. So he was about the age of seven. 
and many Psalters have been used to teach people to read, but this one's special because it actually has an alphabet, and they think that this one was used to help this boy king learn to read. So I thought that was super cool and very serendipitous, given that we're here in Copenhagen for a reading conference. Okay, that's all that I have from Copenhagen, and I will see everyone next month.